What's up guys, Coach Jimmy here from Modern Athlete Strength. Today I'm gonna to be covering this relative intensity chart. We put this out on social media just to give people a better understanding of program design as well as how to understand what intensities should feel like. So that's what we're gonna get into today. So we put this chart together to help you as you're going through our training plans or for the coaches out there to have this tool in front of you as you design programs. So if you look at the top, you can follow my cursor, this max part of the chart here. Picture this is anywhere from one to 10 rep maxes. So a one rep max is obviously gonna be 100% intensity. So 100% of your max on the bar is obviously gonna be a one RM. And then as the percentages drop all the way down to 72 and a half, 72 and a half is right around a 10 rep max. So you're obviously not going to be getting more reps than that. That's going to be your max intensity. That's going to be, it's going to be as difficulty, as high difficulty as it's going to be. So RP, rate of perceived exertion, is going to be at a 10. And reps in reserve, so RIR, is going to be zero. Because there's going to be no reps in the reserve if you are going in this intensity block. Because they are all rep maxes there. And then for the velocity, for those of you who understand um, velocity-based training, roughly the velocity is going to be from 0.1 to about 0.3 meters per second. Again, depending on the unit that you're using, things like that, that can throw it off slightly, but roughly that's going to be in the range there. Okay, so that's for the main max effort work. Okay, as we progress down this chart, as you can see, this heavy plus section, this orange section, it's still going to be heavy, but it's not a max set. OK, so a heavy set of one at 95 or 97 and a half percent of your one rep max is still going to be very heavy because it's close to your max. But it's you probably have a little bit in the tank. So the rate of perceived exertion is around nine or ten. And you might have one rep in the tank, depending on how accurate your training max is. And then the velocity, it could go anywhere from 0.3 to 0.4 meters per second. Okay, so that's that block. The next section, this yellow section, the moderate or the moderate plus, this is the majority of your training weeks. So the majority of your training shouldn't be maxing out. You shouldn't be failing on reps. You shouldn't be taking sets till absolute max day in and day out every single week. There's always a time and place for that. But the majority of your training intensity, like when I sit down to program, the majority of my work is done in this block, okay? So if I'm doing 80% here for sets of three, it's going to be challenging, but you're gonna have some of the tank. If you just use this chart, okay, 80% for three reps, what is that supposed to look like? What is that supposed to feel like? Because this chart is basically taking the intensity and then how it's supposed to feel when you're doing it, okay? So if you're doing 87 and a half percent, which is still a high intensity, but you're only doing it for one rep, that is going to be challenging, but you're not going to be failing, okay? So the RPE is anywhere from six to seven. If you're in the top of the moderate plus, and then reps in reserve over here, so how many reps you have left in the tank, roughly about three to four, and then you can see the, the velocity is increasing here. So. If you're not familiar with velocity-based training, it basically is a, a measurement that connects the bar. There's tether-based units, there's Bluetooth-based units that connect to the bar and basically tell you how fast you're moving it. If you see that number is lower, so in the red section where it's 0.1, that means the bar is moving very slow because when you're lifting a heavy weight near max, the bar is going to move very slow. It's gonna be crawling up there. Whereas if you're moving a submaximal weight for maximum speed, like more dynamic effort, you're going to be in this, this green section here, that 0.7 to 0.8 meters per second. Because now if you're moving 50, let's go, let's go to the three reps. If you're moving 70% for three repetitions, it's obviously going to be the light, all right, because it's low intensity and it's low volume, sets so a three. But if you're trying to move it with max intent, you're probably going to be in that 0.7 to 0.8 meters per second zone there. Okay. And then anything below that, it depends on the intent of the program, but it's usually either designed for your warm up sets. Like if I'm 
building up to my working sets, I may use this chart and be like, all right, I'm going to do 60% for a set of five. I'll do 62 and a half for a set of five and then kind of get up into my main working sets, whether it's in the 70 to 75% zone. And then my main working sets are going to be challenging, but they're not near max. Okay. Let's say I'm trying to build up to a five rep max. Maybe the first three weeks I'm spending time anywhere from 75 to 80%. And then maybe towards the end of the, the three week cycle or 12 week cycle, I wanna do a five rep max. I would program in 87 and a half percent because I know if you hit five reps at, and it's max effort, that is going to be a five rep max at 87 and a half percent. This chart's also great because let's say you're doing the program, you're not exactly sure where your one rep max is. And we on our teams program max max sets, so go till failure. And let's say I give you 87.5%, but you really get nine reps or even 10 reps, that's a sign that your training max is a little too light. So you can readjust your training max based on this chart as well, because now you see what intensity should match with what rep ranges, especially for max effort sets. So that's the other reason why I like this chart is gives people a better understanding of where they're at and what certain intensities should feel like. Um, if you're doing sets of 10 at 45%, that's probably pretty light. And then this chart says that as well. It shows you that that's where it should be. But now if you get into sets of 10 at if you do a set of 10 at 72 and a half, you're going to be redlining because that's a 10 rep max. So you can just see the difference with the chart from the intensity and then just matching it. Okay. What is a absolute max effort set going to feel like? So if you see it on the teams that, Hey, I'm doing 70% for sets of six. Oh, this feels, this feels too light or this feels uh, too heavy. You can also see that as well. So if you see a program out there where you're doing um, 80% for multiple sets of nine, that's not accurate because we now know based on this chart, 80% is right around a nine rep max. You're not going to be doing multiple sets of nine or whatever in this whole red section. You're not gonna be doing multiple sets at the max effort attempt. There's always a time and place to test, but as I alluded to earlier, your whole program shouldn't just be built around testing every single week. So the majority of your work is going to most likely be spent in this yellow section, either in moderate or moderate plus section of this. It's moderate effort or challenging, um, but you're not, you're not failing. So you're building a bunch of your volume accumulation within this yellow and orange, light orange block here. Okay. We give the velocities, because I think it's important if, if you are a coach out there to understand what percentages or what intensities match with certain velocities. Um, so this chart does a good job of that as well. So you know if you're, if you're going for max effort, you're going to be in that 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 zone. Whereas if you're just doing your warm-up sets, you're, you're probably going to be in that 0.9 or uh, 0.8 kind of range there in warm-ups. So it's really good if you're doing a program and you want to kind of follow along and understand a little bit more of the, the why and, and how it should feel, this chart you can use for your own training. And then if you're a coach out there, I personally have this on my desk every time I use percentages in program because I've done a lot of training programs with percentages, but it's always good just to fall back and be like, okay, if I'm doing multiple sets at sets of five or sets of four, where should I spend my working sets? Okay. And you can progress accordingly. You can use this chart if you want to increase every week. Like if, Hey, I'm doing sets of five, I'm going to do week one. I'm going to do sets of five at 67 and a half percent next week. I'm going to do sets of five at 70% week three. I'm going to do sets of five at 72 and a half percent. And then I would deload and you could kind of play around with this chart as you see fit. That's an example of if you're flat loading, meaning you're doing all the sets at one particular weight. If you're going to pyramid up or down, you can use this chart as well. Like, let's say I want to do a set at 
Uh, let's use six, six reps. So I'm going to do a set of six. I'm going to do a set of four and I'm going to do a set of three or a set of two. You can work this chart diagonally as well. So if uh, I have two sets at um, like warm up sets at 62 and a half percent, then my first working set, I want to set a four at um, 70 percent. And then I build up to a set of two at 80 percent. You could also work this chart. Uh, whether you're flat loading with the same intensity and same reps, or if you're pyramiding down in repetitions, meaning starting at a higher rep count and moving to a lower rep count. So it's really versatile. You can use this however you see fit. If you're just on the teams and you want to understand more about kind of program design and, and follow along, you can use this chart as well. I think it's really helpful uh, for, for a lot of different people out there and, um, and really useful, especially because how often do you know exactly where you stand, where your training max is? We all are busy. Our lives are busy with work, family life, friends, whatever. Our tra our actual max fluctuates a lot. So you may have only max out once a year, twice a year. That's all well and good, but throughout the year, things can change. So if you have open sets and things like that, you can use this chart to kind of reestablish where your max is and, or even if you're not doing open sets and if we have programmed out and you're like, wow, that, that feels really difficult when it's meant to be a moderate set, you may have to dial your training max back. Or if it feels really easy and let's say it's supposed to be a hard effort set at 82 and a half percent, you may have to reestablish a different training max because you might not be meeting the intent because your, your training max is off. So really good chart that you guys can use, whether you're a coach, whether you're on our teams, um, it's uh, really useful. Uh, and I look forward to uh, any questions that you guys may have. Feel free to reach out to us at Modern Athlete Strength. Um, you can check out our website, modernathletestrength.com. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have further questions and uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the other side. Thanks.